Jiminy Cricket. Hey, just go on. Oh, wait. <laughs> and now it's basically a brand new gas tank. What the cuss? It stood out like a fingernail in the mashed potatoes. <laughs> Get your dancing. Dad, check out this truck. <laughs> it's a Ranger. I don't see it leaking. <laughs> Well, welcome back. We're here with our 1964 uh, Dodge Dart station wagon. Some of you Australians, so I think you call it like an AP5 Valiant or something like that, you keep telling me. But as you can tell, she's been sitting a long time. If you haven't watched the video where we bought four vehicles, this was one of them. We got this thing out of somebody's driveway up in the mountains. And we were told it had been sitting in about 30 years, so uh got the 170 slant six leaning tower power we got it running in a will it start video a while back you can check out got the push button automatic transmission that we haven't even tried to see if it's working yet in this video we're going to be putting all new brakes on it we got uh, a bunch of stuff here from wrong auto we got a master cylinder hoses wheel cylinders uh we may run into some hardware or brake linings issues but uh, we'll just see how it goes. But it's got an awesome seat. It has the coolest seat cover in the world, so we kind of like that. Looks like they had a little whiskey incident because it has two blue doors and a blue fender on it over here on this side. I'll give you a quick walk around of it. So it's got the Boinga Boinga uh, antenna there, I just realized. Here's uh, under the hood. You can see it says 170 right there. Got the little blue 170 engine with a one barrel. We spent like, I don't know what, $10 getting it run or something. We put an oil filter and oil in it. We uh, rebuilt the carburetor without a kit. Uh, clean, we cleaned the plugs up. Pretty yeah, sure. yeah, everything around here leaks. But anyway, got to replace the master cylinder. It's stuck. We put some fluid in it in the last video, but That's a cool mirror. it is a cool mirror. But you can see this, this fender door and door was blue. So at some point, somebody had a little accident and just stuck some blue parts on it. Buttons are like yeah, there's our push buttons that we don't know if they work, but... 55,000 miles, and that's probably 1,055,000 miles. We don't know how many it really has on it. Got a super cool roof rack. That's one of the selling points that Hot Rod Hoarder got me on. But got a little, whatever this is, what is it, lichen? Is this mold, mildew? I don't know. We got to keep Rocky away from it because he really likes the uh, eating that off the side of the car if you watch the older videos of this car where we got it running. But we got a we got a lift gate here we need to get working again i don't know how to get that working we're gonna try the key because we finally do have a key in the last video we didn't have a key to it and now uh hot rod hoarder got me the key to it got a little whiskey dent here too but anyway we're gonna get this thing up in the air pull the front hoops off here and get started on it right at least we got a key now if it was mobile we would clean it up first but it's not really mobile right now a bolt. Uh, are you doing the squeezy toe pickup uh, move like Oh, you're going to throw it? Yeah. Brace yourselves. Whoa. Oh, oh man. Squeezy could have done better, I think, on that one. Don't you just love how you can fold the back seat down? Isn't that awesome? It looks like we've already cleaned it out, but all we did was pull the carpet out of here that was laying on top of it. You need to, like, put a bed in the back of one of these, like a yeah. wagon. Yeah. Uh, people used to go camping and stuff in them. There we go. That's all you do. Just hit it. Give it a run shot. Get that roughly cover on it. That's right. You can do anything. Get an engine on those sauces. Huh. Yeah. So Ralphie has decided that he's gonna put the new engine hoist together. What? Can you a bolt for this? Which bolt is it? Did you look at your instructions? Not at all. I don't read instructions. Mom's job. Yeah. It's only flat on the bottom. Oh, we got three lug nuts. I mean, what more could you ask for from a $500 car? You know? It already runs, you know. It's a station wagon. It has interesting paint. Where's your shoes at? These old darts and stuff, I don't know how many cross the product vehicles were this way, but. You got right hand threads on the right side and left hand threads on the left side. So remember that one. I've been getting, coming in here and spraying the uh, 
brake backing plates and the master cylinder every uh, we've done it two or three times now just to try to get everything loosened up check us out on other platforms at sleeper dude 88 thank the lord this thing is free but i'm gonna go ahead and spray the upper control arm bolts and stuff you don't ever know what you're gonna have to take loose someday wow look at that dust cover on that tie rod in that's funny unfortunately this one is locked up so we may have to use our puller on this one but this one is righty loosey i love the pie crust casings on this thing that's awesome yeah that's unfortunate i like how these have the torsion bar front end where you can lower them and raise them if you want to and it's really easy to lower them i like that part about these Looks like maybe a 13. Well, get that and a wrenchy. Yeah. So one thing I'm gonna do is I got the brake parts that we found in the back of the 65 dark coupe. And just in case we end up needing some of this stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in some vinegar here and let it be soaking for a, you know, however long this takes. Parts, you can see how rusty they are. So we're gonna put them in this white vinegar here and let them soak and see what happens. We've even got this old wrench here that we found in that 65 dark. What, what, what? Okay, go. Uh, there we go. Well, at least it looks like it's still got grease in there. I'm glad it's not all dried up. You know, sometimes they're completely dry. Huh? Broke that cotter pin. Probably had to put a new cotter pin in on that one. Don't want it falling out going down the highway system this nut wasn't tight at all i didn't even need a wrench to get it loose looks like it has some very small wheel bearings wow that's about the easiest drum we've taken off late on a car that's been sitting forever but does that spring like absorb some of the vibration or something looks like the drum is smooth it's not grooved and our brake linings Still have some life in them, so they're probably gonna get reused. <laughs> Looks like a haunted house in here with all the spotty webs. Good thing I'm not scared of spiders, huh? Got our brake tool here that a viewer sent to us in the P.O. box. I appreciate that. It's come in handy a bunch of times already. Now these have the like spring hold downs on the brake shoes. I I hope we don't have any broke ones of them because I don't know that you can even buy them anymore. At least all those springs are not broke. Looks like our self adjuster is in pretty good shape. We may have to free it up, but it doesn't look ran out and rusted. Taking the wheel cylinder out now, these have a 7 16 bolts that hold them on the back side. And instead of having the little, I don't know, the little plunger deals that normally go in there, it pushes directly on the shoes, which I like. I like that design. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut the brake hoses here and because they're, they're getting replaced anyway, make it a little bit easier to get them out for them to cut off here. So you're gonna be wanting to put that metal handle in that axe. Yeah. That would be pretty awesome. I'm gonna like weld it. Yeah, we're gonna have to weld it. Just do that for a few minutes just to keep it from cooling down too fast and cracking on us. Well, now that we got the important stuff done, like making an ax out of an old ax head that Ralphie found, we're gonna get back to this thing. So I'm gonna start taking through the parts and find our wheel cylinder for this front, front right here. Well, I already see a problem with wrong auto here. They sent us the same side. As you can see, it's drilled on this side. So it's the same side and they're two different sizes. So we're gonna figure out which one's the correct one. And evidently we're gonna have to get a, uh, a new one for the other side. See, when you cut, cut the hose off like that, you can just put a 5.8 socket on the end of the hose and, you know, not round it off, taking it off. So it looks like it's gonna be the smaller of the two because this has nine inch brakes. I think there was an optional 10 inch brakes as well for these so it looks like the smaller the two is going to be it but this means we don't have one for the other side uh, so i gotta figure that out that was very rusty it was very rusty wasn't it 
trying to free up the self adjuster here. It looks looks pretty good. There we go. Uh, it's not really rusty, rusted up like a lot of them are. Usually the threads are exposed and are super rusty, but luckily this one was screwed all the way in. Maybe they had just put new brakes on it. Oh yeah, we're good now. I guess this thing doesn't have self-adjusting brakes. Uh, there's no cable, there's no levers or anything to push on this. So I guess you gotta adjust these every so many miles. Uh, that's kind of ancient right there. I do like how you don't have to deal with any of those little push arms or plungers or whatever that usually go here. It goes directly on the brake shoes. I'll probably have to adjust this out some to make it fit. We got a bunch of brake dust and stuff here on our spindle we're gonna have to clean off to make sure we don't have nothing Hi. bad bad in our grease. Yeah, it's amazing how nice they stay underneath there. Stop yelling at me. Payback. Fixing your mess. Payback. 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 They put the wrong wheel. I thought Ralph was supposed to be putting this together. Exactly. That's what I thought. Instead of playing with axe. Axe man. So we got our wheel bearings here and our grease cap and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and clean them in the parts washer here and get all the junk and grime off of them. They're pretty gritty feeling. All right, we're going to repack these bearings now that we got them cleaned up. Some of you young fellers may have never even packed a bearing before, but these old cars you had to maintain them it wasn't like a sealed bearing like all the newer cars have where you have no maintenance whatsoever these old ones you had to pack the bearings every so often or you're gonna run a wheel off y'all ever ran a wheel off i know my wife has thank you i didn't want to get my hands all rusty you want to snug it down and then back it off because a little loose is a lot better than too tight when it comes to this stuff. Got our new cotter pin in here. Uh, the whole line's spinning. I'm gonna have to put a wrench on the bottom. Oh, golly, I hit my elbow on that fender. That's not funny. So we got the same problem we always have. The line gets stuck in the tube nut on the end. So I'm probably gonna heat this up a little bit and then try to hold the line real gentle with some vice grips. I've had good luck doing that. So we got it heated up pretty good now. So I like to clamp on the brake line itself, but you gotta be really careful or you'll just flatten it out and then it'll be no good, which it, it may end up being no good anyway. Hold it right there. And that's your best bet on getting one of these loose. If if this doesn't work, it's just gonna break. I got another bite on it here. I don't I don't think this is gonna end up working. I think it's just twisting the line. Yeah, it is. So we're probably gonna have to remake this line. This is probably gonna be a reoccurring thing on this brake project, I'd say. Yep, just broke it. Well, probably need a new line anyway, huh? Well, it looks like the ends are correct on our brake hose here, but unfortunately it didn't come with a new copper washer. So I guess I'm gonna have to reuse this one on it. So here's what I'm gonna have to make. This is your typical 3 16 metal brake line. That's what most cars have. So I gotta make it to go back up under here, under the frame rail, solid frame rail too. And it comes snaking up through, oh, we don't say snake, up through here and it goes across back through there comes over the top of the firewall and all the way back down to there's a junction block down there. So that's what we're gonna have to make now. Uh, it's, you know, people sometimes try to fix them and put a union in a union. I don't really like doing that unless I just have to. So we're gonna make a whole new brake fun. I don't know if we can make quite as tight a turn. It makes like a complete 180 degree turn. Yeah, push it all the way around to 180 degrees. Oh, that's good. So that's not quite as tight as the factory bin, but it's close. Upside down. It's 180 degrees. Yeah, you'd be so upside down. down. Yeah, it's 180. So that's right. But even, I think that's about the right angle. We got to get to go under the frame rail there. It looks like an S. Yeah, look at that. Man, we're good. Then it comes back up around the other side of the frame rail like this. So we got about 14 and a half inches to go up the firewall and then it makes a exit stage left towards the driver's side. It needs to make basically a 90 
like that. So it's gonna go up, and then it goes about there, and it goes back down. Like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the other end of this brake line to make it easier. Maybe I can get a socket on it then. It's, it's all the way down here at the frame rail. What are you doing, Pebbles? Hanging out with your new friend? Wind Gust? Who named that goat? Wind Gust? What the cuss? What's going on here? Okay. Kind of finally got it out of there in one piece. I just wanted to have an example to go by to make the new one, really. Yeah. Well, of course, the end of this brake line down here is stuck in the junction block, so I'm going to have to heat it up again. Well, it broke right loose when I heat it up. It's crazy how much that works. Rocket got life figured out. What are you trying to say? I believe you can get me through the night. Where's Sam? You're supposed to back me up on that, bro. So I'm just going to show you this once, so pay attention. You get your little die here for your double flaring tool. That's how far your brake line needs to stick out past this uh, tool right here. You tighten these down. So then you put the die in the end of the brake line. You take your flaring tool here and you push it down flat. So once you tighten it all the way down, back it off, pull the die back out of here, and then you reflare it with uh, out the die in there. So there you go, your die's out. You put the flaring tool back in there, and you gotta make sure you have your tube nut on there, or you're gonna redo it all over again. Then you take all this back off there, and you got a double flare. So there we go, we got this end done. I'm gonna leave the line loose for now, and we're gonna flush any brake fluid that comes through from the junction block out before we hook it up for good. You know, this thing may have ran a wheel off at one point, because that looks like possibly the casing came off and went, Phew! Exit stage right. Man, that line is just like dead on. Sometimes I just say to myself, Self, how are you so good at what you do? I hope we don't have to revisit this junction block with all the other ones too. We'll see though. All right, we're on the other side now. We gotta try to break this thing loose. It's getting lighter while I'm doing this. Oh, hey baby. You decide to come see me? I don't actually have a bottle. That's not a Ow, your little teeth hurt. I'm sorry, there's no bottle here. Little girl. How am I gonna get this thing loose, huh? How am I gonna get it loose? It's so stuck. I wonder if I put a pry bar or something in there if I can turn it over. You just want me to hold you? So I got a big long pry bar in here now. <sighs> Trying my best to get this thing to turn, but we may have to just end up getting our uh, our puller on here. What do you think, Pudding? Is this gonna work? <sighs> that is not one to turn it off. I don't know, Pudding. I don't know about it. It's not one to cooperate, is it? I don't know. I think we're going to pull it, Pudding. Well, at least we got the grease cap off without trying. Uh, it's still got some grease to it, which is a good thing. At least it's not dry. This nut too is completely loose. Usually you have to, you know, take a wrench or something to get them started, but both of these were completely loose. I've given up on it. I'm just gonna end up breaking the, the drum if I beat on it much more. I wanna put my puller on here and see what I can do with that. Well, that's unfortunate. It won't reach it. Maybe if I back it off all the way up in there, I can do it. 
I got it backed up about an inch up inside there. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. The threads are messed up at the bottom is why it's being such a pain to back those threads off. The only bad thing about doing it this way is a lot of times it'll break the hardware that hold the brake shoes down. I don't have any new hardware, so we're gonna try to take it easy. up that way something at the top's holding it there we go it's probably bending something losing stuff from the top oh jeez. looks like our brakes are adjusted way out our springs are still there but of course our hold downs which are also springs broke and i don't have one, new ones well, the drum doesn't feel all grooved up and messed up. And it looks like tails from the crypt again in here. Yeah, it looks like we're definitely going to have to do something with the hold downs. There we go. Okay. There's our brake shoes now. It's definitely stretched out that hold down though. Same thing here. I'm just going to go ahead and cut these. So I can put a socket on this hose. Man, that one, that one's already ripped loose. Look, that's what that's why you always have to replace all your rubber parts on a car that's actually been sitting 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. You're going through it? Yes. <laughs> See, cutting that line makes it so much easier to get these off there. So O'Reilly's came through for us. And uh, they delivered us the correct wheel cylinder. Yeah, that's the correct thing. So you can see where the bleeder screw was already broken off there. Well, you should hit that on the ground. This? Yeah. Why? Right, this. Okay, that came out. It's just like years of grease. I guess people grease in this ball joint and it drying up and they greased it again because the boot was split. It encapsulates it, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. Oh. Okay, it turned without heat. I guess that's a good sign. Yeah, see, it's trying to twist the metal line. So I might have to put vice grips on it too. And I think it may have actually not twisted on me. Yeah, I think it came loose. What a deal. Yeah, it's come loose. Now, a lot of times they just snap off like the other side did. That's nice to have one come loose, not have to make a new line for everything. So we called the local O'Reilly's and they can get the brake hardware kit here for us in a few hours. So I went ahead and ordered that. Well, you guys are getting it. Yeah, it's bigger. Getting closer. Okay, we're in the back now. Let's see. I didn't, I couldn't remember if this one was freed up or not. It's not looking like it. So this one here on the driver's side, at least turns, and it may not be easy to get off, but it turns. Yeah. Rust and stuff that's coming out of there. Jeez. Yeah, let's get to the next level right there. It's hanging up at the top here. Like the bottom is looser than the top once again. So apparently our wheel cylinder, something's hanging up. I may just go ahead and unbolt the wheel cylinder to give it freedom to come out. Surprisingly, this driver's side brake line is coming loose without any issues. Now the passenger side one, the nut is completely rounded off from the last guy. So i we'll have to try to get some vice grips on it or something. We'll probably have to put a new end on it at least. So this one here is totally stripped out. So I've got it loosened up with the vice grips, but 
Uh, we're gonna see what kind of shape this thing's in when we get it off here. I'm just breaking loose the 7 16 bolts now that hold the wheel cylinders on. A lot rust going at the bottom. Oh, we need brake shoes. Man, that's so good. More haunted house in here. Great. Well, so Colin got some brake shoes ordered. I can see our self-adjuster cable is broke too. Now why would this thing have self-adjusting brakes in the back but not in the front? That's kind of weird, right? Well, I'm just glad all the springs and stuff look to still be good. Our adjuster needs some oil for sure. These springs that hold the shoes on are so strange. I'm not, not used to dealing with those at all. Well, at least our rear wheel cylinders look good. Same thing here, the bleeder screw was broke off though. I've been trying to put this in a few times. It looks like the bleeder screw is just too long to fit. So I had to take it out to get the thing back in here. Our drums have looked pretty good. I want to say this is because these things have the opposite thread pitch on each, on different sides. Looks like we got another broke self adjuster cable, so we'll have to get one of them. And our brake shoes here are pretty much shot just from being worn out. So this brake may have been hanging up on them or something. You do enough of these things and you start to just naturally know how they come apart and go back together. Our self-adjuster was adjusted way out on this one too. Those are really easy to get off there. That spring-loaded design like that. Hold it over here, Ralphie. The stupid emergency brake arm is in the way. I hate emergency brake cables and stuff. There we go. So this is why you always want to replace your wheel cylinders because they end up corroding up inside and the piston gets jammed up in the bore. Same thing with calipers, they do the same stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rear brake hose. So that way, if this one's wrong, we're absolutely up a creek, it's my plan. Uh, I'm hoping that it unscrews out of this junction block. I've had some trouble with that before too, where, uh, you know, they didn't unscrew. You had to buy the hose that has the junction block in it. There we go. Okay, good, it unthreads out of there, good. Okay, I think we're all right with this one. Now I just gotta get it to come loose from the brake metal line up here and we'll be okay. Yeah, the metal line is twisting and I can't hold it because it has this spiraled up metal coil around it. Maybe it'll break loose. Maybe it broke loose there. Yeah, I think it broke loose. Good. <laughs> Jiminy Cricket. Got our new brake hose on here. Tightening it back up. So since we're waiting on the rest of our brake stuff uh, from the parts store, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the master cylinder. We're going right back with a factory style master cylinder. Now, a good upgrade for these is to go with like a dual reservoir. Uh, where it has two brake lines that come out one for the front one for the rear That's a lot safer because then you know this way if you're anything on your brakes go out They all go out with a dual reservoir only one's gonna go out, you know Come on. It's wanting to twist off so we're probably gonna put some heat to it and put the vice grips on it I hope this works. I hate making new lines on these rusty old cars. Ugh, broke right off. Awesome. Well, looks like we're at least putting a new end on this one. This actually has a bolt that holds the 
master cylinder in instead of a pin like normal. It's weird to have one with four bolts. Usually they just have the two, you know. There you go. Now look what's down in there. Man. Huh? Looks like the sink after you get done brushing your teeth. No, it's mom's. Mom? She has to use a wire brush. <laughs> Why are you always hating on me? Hey, hey. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the vise and drill this, that line back out of it so I can reuse it because that's a really strange looking fitting. I probably could get it somewhere, but it's probably not going to be easy. Also, there's a warning with this one that do not bench bleed it. So, you know, they didn't have to worry about me. I ain't never bench bled one in my life anyway. Our bolt that holds uh, the shaft to the brake pedal is stuck in here. Well, the hammer didn't work. Let's see if the press will. We may just have to replace this. Oh, there it goes. Good thing we bought a press, huh? I've got a quarter inch drill bit here, and I'm gonna drill the old brake line out of this fitting so we can reuse the fitting now. I think I can just cut the end off of this one and reflare it is what I'm hoping. Okay, I think that one's good to go, so we should be able to put our master cylinder on now. You wanna load up? You wanna ride? Get here and help me with this thing. She loves to get in the car. That's like her favorite thing to do. Try to act a little better than Rocky does. Oh. All right, I got the pin back in there. Come on, Ellie. Let's get out. Come on. Good girl. We finally got threaded in there good. Hopefully we won't have any leaks when we get done with this. We've had pretty good luck in the past. I'm gonna go ahead and put some brake fluid in here and let it be uh, working its way down. The wifey went down to the parts store for me and picked up the hardware kit that I ordered. So this has the new little retainer springs and everything. Hopefully this is all we need to reattach these front brake shoes on this thing now. Oh, what are you doing in here now, huh, Trouble? So I'm just gonna use these new retainer springs here because uh, everything else looks pretty good, but you can see how stretched out that one retainer spring was. The other one's completely broke, so we're gonna be replacing these. Oh, there you go. The adjuster on this one's actually in really good shape. It's actually got a bunch of oil in it. This tool right here makes this so much easier than using pliers or something to do this. Perfect. Clean all our junk off of here now that we're done making a mess. Trying to adjust the brake shoes out to where they're just barely dragging when the drum's on there. Yeah, it's still too loose. Okay, there you go. Now we're just starting to drag now, so that should be just about right. So we've got all of our bearings repacked with grease now, putting all this back together. So we got everything tightened back up now. Got our cotter pin in there. We're done on this corner aside from bleeding it. So since we're still waiting on our brake shoes and self adjuster, for the back, I'm gonna go ahead and change the fuel pump out because if you watch this video before when we got it running, we had to uh, end up just gravity feeding this thing in here because the fuel pump was not working at all. All three of the slant sixes we worked on lately, the fuel pump didn't work. This is not the easiest uh, to change. Now these lines aren't bad, but it looks like the bolts down there are not gonna be fun to get to at all. And this tool right here saves me a ton of time. I use it all day at my day job in here. And you get a hard to get to bolt and it saves you a ton of time. I'm gonna blow through this fuel line going from the pump to the carb. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this fuel filter. 
we need to put in before the carburetor since we're not gravity feeding this thing anymore. Oh no. What? What did you do? My, my red hot. You dropped your candy? Where is it? It's down in there. Oh, you dropped your candy down there? Let's see. <laughs> it's not funny. Oh, they're down the bottom of the fender now. Well, we can always see them. You can come visit no. them. No, get this out. It's not gonna dun. work. I need your help. Oh wait. Oh, it's, they're too heavy. Help. Oh wait. <laughs> I need your help. <laughs> it's so funny. No. Awesome. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just glad we found those red hots. I was worried to death. I think I'm gonna go ahead and make an attempt to drop this tank and clean it out. Uh, it looks like somebody has dropped it before and put some shag carpet right there to keep it from rubbing, so that's cool. But it looks like it just has one strap. Gonna unhook the wire to the sending unit here. Just go ahead and cut the fuel hose. Yes. Had to upgrade to the big boy now. Stuck, stuck to that carpet over there. I don't know what's holding us on this side. It's just stuck on the pillar. Hey, completely empty. They must have done like my dad and got, got their gas five dollars at a time. <laughs> well, that's really surprising. Look how clean that tank is. You could probably get away without even cleaning this thing, but I'm gonna go ahead and rinse it out with some fuel. Well, despite having a couple little pinholes right there in that one corner, I think what we're going to do is flush it out. And when we go to pick up our our brake hardware, we're going to get one of those like JB Weld gas tank things you see on the shelf and uh, just patch that corner up and reuse this thing. I'm going to blow through this fuel line here and try to blow any sort of trash that may be in this fuel line out. All right, we ran to the parts store, got hopefully everything we're gonna need to finish up the brakes. And we also got some stuff I'm gonna try, some JB Weld stuff on that gas tank that's gonna sit down in the sun drying for us. And now it's basically a brand new gas tank. Well, it appears we have the correct brakes used for it. Hopefully our cable for our self adjuster and all this is correct as well. Putting our uh, emergency brake arm back on here. I've been known to leave the emergency brake off a time or two in my life. This little spring-loaded booger back here behind the emergency brake arm is not easy. There we go. Had to get my long uh, needle nose pliers for it. And remember, brake shoes are just like school pictures. The tall one goes in the back. <sighs> Snap. What the cuss? <sighs> That's all I need, just enough light to be able to see. Some of you guys will understand not be able to see in the dark. All right, I think we got all everything on there. All our new self-adjuster stuff. We're gonna to to adjust these brakes out. A little too loose right now. Then we should be good to go. Well, okay. I think we got all that together now. This gas tank has really impressed me, even though it had a couple pinholes there. Same, same here with the grommet. Usually these grommets are absolutely rotten, but this one looks to be uh, in pretty good shape still. I don't know about you guys, but usually when I have to drop a tank, it's completely full. We're gonna leave our shag carpet in there. You know, if this works, I'm not sure that I know how to drive an old car without a boat tank in the back seat. I should have checked this while I had the gas tank off. I didn't think about it, but I need to check the differential oil while I got while I'm under here. You know, yeah, nothing leaking out. We're gonna have to add a little bit. It didn't take too much. It may have took a pint to fill it up. You kids these days know what a pint is. We're up here at the fuel pump now. 
replacing the rubber line that comes from the tank up to the pump. A lot of times it's easier just to cut these. They get so hard they don't want to come off here at all. So while I'm in here with all the plug wires off, I'm going to take off this uh, hot wire we ran to the coil in the uh, will it start video and lose the nut forever just then and hook up the factory positive coil wire now that we found the key to the car. Now I had to do a little digging in the oil dry, but I found it down there finally. It stood out like a fingernail on the mashed potatoes. Okay, got our cat back on, got all our wires back on. We're getting close now. Snack time. <laughs> That's a good baby. <laughs> Ralphie, I think it's finally time to bleed the brakes on this thing. Yeah. We finally got to that point. So I guess if you want to get in the driver's seat, uh, what we're going to do first is push the brake pedal just to get the fluid out of the lines. Then we're going to hook them up and start bleeding. Cute. Cute, cute. If you just want to go all the way to the floor, all the way up, and until we get these lines flushed out, okay? Yeah. Okay, it's, it's starting to come out. Keep doing that. Yeah, I saw some black come out at first, didn't you? Mm -hmm. All right, hold on just a second. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hook up this brake line on this driver's front because it all has the same supply line, so it's all coming out here. Okay, that's good. It's coming out clean. If you want to go around that way. Come on, girl. Oh, yeah, look how black that is. Yeah. See, that's what you don't want going into your wheel cylinders, all that black, rusty mess that's in the brake lines. It's getting harder. Oh, it is? Are you going all the way up, all the way down? I'm not getting much fluid, bud. I don't know what's up. Something messed up. I don't know. So he was pumping the brakes a long time, and he said it kept getting harder and harder, and I was getting no fluid back here uh, when it started getting hard, and all of a sudden, he said the pedal just poop, popped all the way down to the floor, and now we're getting all kinds of fluid, so I think we're pretty good now. We're gonna have to bleed it after this. Well, I totally forgot that this tube nut back here was stripped out, so, we're just gonna call it good and tighten it up with the vice grips. Okay, push it to the floor. Push it to the floor. Push it to the floor. Dang. Get your band, son. Okay, we got a good pedal now. No leaks that I've seen, that's amazing. What are you scrolling on Marketplace again? Yeah. He's always looking for the next one. All the time. Dad, check out this truck. <laughs> it's a Ranger. I love my Rangers. Drop your lug nuts. Who needs them clean? Ow. God. What are you doing? I'm trying to help you. Here, here, I got it. I got it. I got it. You didn't have it. Mom, I literally don't see it. Can you back up? Oh, I seen something. Look at you. Yeah, I love these old pie crust ones. Bro, you put the lug nut on backwards. Who would do that? Uh -huh. Mama? Stop it. So, we don't have enough dart lug pattern hoops around here. So, we had stolen these off the wagon for the, uh, coop video so we're gonna take them back now we're repoing them isn't that, isn't that weird yeah. oh, oh, okay. how much way does this go what is what's the problem i got it Yeah, yeah, there you go. Come on. 
Good job on the star pattern there. Came down quick, didn't it? And now the easier it is. I'm not gonna be able to do this. I ain't gonna be able to do this. I don't see it leaking. That's all. That's it. You missed a drop. <laughs> Shut it. Well, we won't be complete without our hubcaps. There we go. So we had a viewer send us some ramps in the mail. So we're going to go ahead and use them for the first time on this car right here. Maybe that'll help us get out of the shop easier until we get some concrete out there. So real quickly, one more thing we got in the mail in our P.O. box. Uh, Mr. Garcia, I believe was his name, sent us these pick tools and magnets and stuff for Ralphie to use on digging the carburetor since you like cleaning up carburetor so much. So thank you a lot for sending that. We really appreciate it. When you push down the park lever, neutral goes in. So, uh, if it does anything crazy, you hit the brake. Go for it. Man, that's awesome because it's been, it's been, I don't know, a month? It's probably been over a month since we started this thing. It's only ran like two or three times in that first video. And that's starting right there with the key. So everything's working with the key. We're good to go there. That's great. I pushed drive and it didn't take off. And then I pushed first and it took off. Now we, we put fluid in this thing uh, back when we got it running. So we should be good on fluid still. Definitely probably need a repair now. <laughs> I thought I heard it. It was a little aggressive, yeah. Little Every time I let off it, I may need to idle it up just a little bit or something. to get it to idle right. I don't know why it's not wanting to idle for us. He wants to drive, so I guess we're going to try to figure out how to drive this thing with him behind the wheel. Alright, let's get over. Let's get switch places. Don't you love his seat cover? Yeah. It's so cool, right? I mean, if the seat was actually right. an hour. So here. I'll work the throttle and the brakes, and you can steer. What? I yeah. can do the brakes. You can do the brakes? Yeah. You got to get forward, then. 
All right, we're in neutral. Go for it. Put it in first. It's hot. Don't hit the fence. Exactly. <laughs> Think it'll pull this thing? Maybe. Probably. <laughs> this is going to be so great. It's going to be funny if it falls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it will be funny. We're good to go, Mr. Crappy. Who needs air ride? <laughs> Ralphie's gonna ride in the back seat. enough fun for one day I reckon. I, I can't believe how good this thing did. I really did not expect all these push button stuff to work at all. <laughs> this thing is just the best. I mean 
Who's ever hooked a trailer behind one on the first drive, you know? Ladies first. This thing's on real dirty. It's, yeah, it's kind of dirty. We're going to have to do a cleanup video next. But I can't believe these are the casings that were on this thing. If you go back and watch the Will It Start video, if you haven't. This thing was sitting in somebody's driveway in the dirt for like, well, you can see. It was buried up to here in the dirt. And all these are holding air still. It's crazy. Hey, look at this one. This one was buried all the way up to here. And uh, as Hot Rod Hoarder would say, you could see the air in this casing. And look, this holds air fine. It's got all kinds of tread, knee deep in tread. We have all the babies in one spot. We've never actually had them all together in one spot before, but this is all five of the new babies around here. I definitely think we need to name one of them Bullwinkle, maybe a Boris. Well, guys, we appreciate you watching till the end of the video. Oh, you want some pebbles? I'm glad we got all of Rocky's babies in one place. And next video, we're going to do a cleanup on this. Probably going to put some new casings on it, you know, to where we can really get her out in the road. But remember, to pour one out for your homies, it's the respectful thing to do. And eat your Vienas and drink your RC Coles. Isn't that right? It's just like taking your vitamins, really. Here's some facts. It's if a, it's cold, it ain't gonna pour. Okay? That's, that's factual. The viscosity. Yeah. Uh, oh, he is dying for some Vienas. There'll be plenty more videos to come. We gotta get the dark coop going with a put brakes on it and casings and stuff like that. It really cleaned up pretty nice if you hadn't seen that video. You can see our merchandise down below if you want to buy a t-shirt or something. That really helps us out. Oh, you want the Vania? Here you go. How is he staying Rocky would really head? appreciate it. I don't know how he is, but it really hurts. I, I thought I had to go haul our 9,000. I know. I guess you don't. You mean we? That's right. right. You can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at SleeperDude88. And you can check out our check second channel, SleeperDude2. You got to watch these goats grow up, so keep watching, guys. But you can definitely be expecting a uh, another video about this car coming soon. We'll get it cleaned up and uh, assess what we need to do about rust repair and uh, stuff like that. So I can't believe how good it did. I mean, $500 car. It's a wagon. Has a roof rack. Has a trailer hitch. I mean, how can you go wrong, Ralphie? Nothing. You can't. Yeah. Push button. Impossible. Not yeah. Push button automatic transmission with a slant yeah. six. This thing will run forever. And I mean, it'll be a perfect car for Wawa to drive here in a couple years. She can take Ralphie and Squeezy to school in it in front of all our friends. It'll be great. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Remember, Jesus saves and George Nelson withdraws. It's facts. Moin. 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 Oh, I, I really, I it's really. A, it's an airplane. No, 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 it's an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, land the plane. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your Mustang shirt, bro. All right, tell them bye, Rocky. Tell them eat your vainas. There you go. You can have some animal crackers. Don't, don't lick my fingers. That's not a vainia. Well, we didn't end up using any of this stuff, but I thought I would show you. Look how nice some of this stuff turned out. Now, it's been sitting in here for, uh, shoot, it's probably 48 hours now. But look how nice that is. So vinegar works really well, and it's a really cheap option for getting the rust off there if you just give it some time. You know, our old wrench needs a little more time, but it's coming around. And here's what was underneath the car when we got done. Man, they always end up dropping a bunch of rust and dirt when you're hammering on them after they've been sitting for that many years.